Greetings. Today we're going to discuss physical and chemical properties and physical and chemical changes. But before we do that, there's something I want to talk about. All matter really has properties. All matter or all substances have properties, including people. Hang on. Hi. Do you recognize me? Do you know who I am? Well, that's because you know enough about me to be able to identify me. See you later. Alright, so now we're going to talk about, I really need my glasses, yeah, those are identifiable. All substances have property, including pe properties, including people. The more of these properties that you know, the better you can identify the person, the better you know the person. For example, there's face, you recognize the face, you can recognize the voice, the height, uh, there are fingerprints, DNA, there are many properties. And you recognized me, even if I was a little disguised, because there are properties that you know about me, including things like my height, my voice, even if my hair was disguised and my glasses were a little different, you were able to identify me. So we can do the same with substances. With any matter. There are physical and chemical properties. So make sure that you pause, take a moment to copy these down. There's color, freezing point, boiling point, melting point, density, mass, temperature, volume. These are all physical properties. Over here on this side, I have the chemical properties. The chemical properties include heat of combustion, Reactivity with water, pH, electromotive force, combustibility, does it burn, does it not burn, and reactivity with acids or any other substance. So what we're looking at here are just some examples of these physical properties and chemical properties. Physical properties, we can look at something and identify these properties without changing the substance itself. First, we're going to talk about intensive and extensive properties. An intensive property does not change with amount. An extensive property changes with amount. Going back over here, these in red are those substances that do change with the amount. For example, the mass. If you have 2 grams, 2 kilograms of copper, that's different from 5 kilograms or 10 kilograms of copper. Or 10 grams of sugar is different from 20 grams of sugar. It's a little different, a lot different actually. Volume changes. Take a look over here. These are different volumes of colored water. Each one has an amount that we can read using our graduated cylinders, but you can tell that volume is an extensive property because it actually changes with amount. So let's go back to physical changes. In a physical change, so the substance changes form, but do not. Separate that, okay. Do not change formula. Here's an example. Water as a liquid changes to water as a solid, from water to ice. That has not changed the formula of the substance. Water to gas Notice I show a little L here, showing that it is water in the liquid phase. And over here I have a G for gas. But regardless, it has not changed the formula of the compound. I have some pictures here to show you different 
changes of phase, changes in the substance, the form of the substance, but we're not changing the formula. Take a look at this. I can't stand that thought. It's just way too cold for me. We just don't experience that in Florida, but it happens up north, especially in the eastern part of our country. Over here, I have a piece of crumbled paper. Okay, has it changed form? Of course not. It's still paper. Over here, I have a pumpkin, and inside, there is some dry ice. The dry ice is changing directly from the solid phase to the gas phase. That is called sublimation. And over here, I have someone working with glass, heating up the glass and changing it just by melting it into a beautiful sculpture, a glass sculpture. Let's move on to chemical changes. In a chemical change, substances change from chemical A to chemical B. So we do change from one substance to another. For example, we can have hydrogen peroxide decomposing or breaking down into oxygen and water. Notice that we have changed from chemical A to two chemical Bs. Hydrogen peroxide oxygen is given off, and water, new substances being formed. So how do we know that a chemical change has taken place? Well, there are some ways. If it gives off a gas, be careful, it's not like when boiling water, okay? A new gas, if it gives off a new gas and you see bubbling, that's a chemical change. If light or heat is given off, that's a chemical change. If you have color change, and not as in adding food coloring to water, but a true color change, that is a, like from green to yellow, or to, from, from purple to orange, that is a chemical change. And finally, the formation of a precipitate. I'm going to show you examples of some of these in the lab momentarily. All right, so let's take a look at what's going on here around the lab. I have a pot of water boiling, and if, ah, it's hot, ooh, ah, ah. Uh, but if you notice, there's gas, not really gas, but water vapor being produced, which is, yes, water in the gaseous phase, but it's not a new gas, it's still water. Take a look. The water is condensing on this metal plate. All right, so this is a physical change because, yes, it is changing into a gas, but it's still water because I can bring it back pretty easily. All right. Moving right along. All right, so now I'm going to take a piece of magnesium ribbon and put it in the flame and see what happens. Notice there's a bright light being given off. And I have a different substance when I finish. No longer do I have magnesium, just Mg, but now I have a piece of magnesium oxide because it reacts with the oxygen in the air. So now I'm going to take a piece of, uh, or several pieces of zinc, zinc metal. And I am going to react it with hydrochloric acid. And carefully, I'm going to place a balloon. 
a broken balloon. If I can fix it, I might be able to do this. All right, and now I'm collecting the gas that is being given off. And actually, the gas here is hydrogen gas. I started out with zinc, hydrochloric acid, HCl, and now I'm producing a gas, which is hydrogen gas, and the other product is zinc chloride. So there's my gas. There it is. Later on, we're going to test this gas to see if it's really hydrogen gas. Okay. Let's come over here. I'm going to show you another reaction. I have some potassium iodide and lead nitrate. I'm going to pour some of the lead nitrate in this beaker. And then I'm going to pour some of the potassium iodide in this beaker. Notice that it's got a slight yellow color. And I'm going to take these two and combine them together. Notice that I have just produced a new substance, a precipitate. This substance is lead iodide, and it is a precipitate, and it's called a precipitate because eventually it will precipitate to the bottom, and there will be a layer of solid, like a powder, at the bottom, and this area up here will be clear. So this is what we call formation of a precipitate, another sign of a chemical change. Not only did we produce a precipitate, but it also changed colors. So two for the price of one. See you later. So now let's try some examples. This is your turn. This is your time to try to see if you under, really understand what you have learned. Take a moment, write it down, see if you can figure out if these are physical or chemical changes, and then I'll be back in a moment to tell you the answer. What you have learned. Take a moment, write it down, see if you can figure out if these are physical or chemical changes, and then I'll be back in a moment to tell you the answer. Dissolving salt in water is a physical change because it is still salt and water. No new substance has formed. Frying an egg. Yes, it is still an egg, but has it changed colors? Absolutely. Same with cooking a steak. Does it change colors? It definitely changes colors. So therefore, it is a chemical change. If I take per paper and burn it, has it changed in the chemical makeup? Absolutely. Another chemical change. What about if I make a ring out of a lump of silver. That is definitely a physical change because it is still silver. I have not changed the composition. I have not produced a new chemical. If you can undo it easily, for the most part, it's a physical change. That is all for today. Have a wonderful day. See you tomorrow.